Hey there, Cobbers. I'm Jack. And I'm Jillian. And this week we have... The Concordia on Air. The Concordia speech team is winning. In sports, even shorter seasons. And on A&E, expensive fashion. All that and more on Concordia on Air. Welcome yeah. back, Cobbers. So, I mean, well, yeah, welcome back. Dylan and I were talking about Girl Scout cookies. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest losses, personally, I think, to COVID-19, but also one of the greatest reasons to stick on a diet. I mean, the only time I ever buy Girl Scout cookies is if I see, like, actual live Girl Scouts I won't buy off of their website. So, sadly, that means I've gotten no Girl Scout cookies this year, but at the same time, I've gotten no Girl Scout cookies this year. So, so contrary mean, to Jack, I have a plug named Susie from back home, and I get the same order every single year of Girl Scout cookies. So I had them actually shipped, and they came here today. So currently waiting for me in my dorm, I have four boxes of Caramel Delights and four boxes of Thin Mints waiting for me on my mini fridge. So fortunately, I haven't taken on a diet. <laughs> and no tagalongs. Tagalongs are the best. I would disagree. I think I'm a coconut guy, so Caramel Delights are splendid. And oh, th Thin Mints so with good. a cold glass of milk. Do you, you like your Thin Mints frozen or room temperature? Frozen, 100%. Good. Especially good man. when I leave them in my freezer, which is outside in my garage when it's negative 20, so that they're prime frozen. Like the amount of frozen where you'll keep a pop in the fridge and the pop explodes and like ruins the fridge. One of those types of you know things. Also, we started a, uh, it's not really an intramural basketball league, but the base section in Chapel Choir is now playing basketball together on Wednesday nights. Really? And That's it is the, so cute. It is the most horrendous game of basketball <laughs> you'll ever see ever. Besides like, uh, besides Eli, because he's a, he's a, you know. A, Literal a big, giant. Yeah, yeah, and he played basketball in high school. But the rest of us just make fools of ourselves and just wear shorts and our sneakers and try and run up and down the court. It's hilarious. Of course, of course. Yeah. The only sport I was ever good at was badminton because I have really great eye to racket eye to coordinate. racket coordination. Yeah, so you yeah. weren't good at tennis though? No, not at all. The ball was too fast, but the birdie, <laughs> I could easily go like, oh, oh. Right there. Yeah, so. I mean, for me, contrary to that, I was really good at baseball for the early part of my life, and then I decided to take up swimming, which was the worst, best decision of yeah. my life, as, oh. as to what I say. Um, and eating 6,000 calories a day, I don't miss it. Well, actually, sometimes I do miss it, because I would burn it off anyways. <laughs> um, no, but anyways, do you have any fun plans coming up for the weekend? It's warm out. It's really warm. Fun plans. Um, if it stays 60 degrees, hopefully hiking. If it's below 60 degrees, hopefully hiking. If it's below 40 degrees, sit in yeah. my room, do absolutely nothing, watch a bunch of TV. Fortunately, one of the greatest things is when the snow starts to melt and then all the runoff starts piling up on the sidewalks. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, there's not going to be any ice here. But the temperatures still get low overnight and all that freezes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, when you see people slip, it's one of those things, it's like a car crash. You don't want to watch it but you just kind of need to because it's absolutely hilarious you can't help but laugh even though i've been there uh the outside of hoyam hall right going into <laughs> vinston that whole little spot puddles up usually with runoff and when i have to go to my 8 a.m class in the morning i'm not worried about what's on the ground i'm trying to turn the corner quick and get there before eight because i woke up five minutes earlier but anyways besides the point i've wiped out at least three times there this year oh no i totally agree psa for everyone walking around the bookstore and live Dallin, there's this huge puddle there and um, yesterday, I was like, oh, it's only like, what, half an inch? It's barely going to do anything. It actually got up. You can't see my leg, but it got up to my ankle. So just put that in perspective, I'm about 5'10". My ankle's probably less than a foot. So if you can do the math there, there's a really big puddle. There's no math Don't to be had. It. It's, it's an ankle. There's no proportions that anyone can. There's no standard ankle size. Jack, puddles so are can't. bad. Watch out, folks. We're yes, here to keep you safe. You can, here you can put waterproofing spray on your shoes and just bounce in puddles as much as you want. No, no, yeah. I'm too lazy. You're too lazy. And I don't want to spend money when I could just be wet for about an hour and then call it a day. Hmm. That's a fair approach. Are there any new decor pieces that you've added to your dorm this semester, Jack? <laughs> um, for some reason, everyone keeps thinking that I like stuffed animals, which like, 
It's not that I don't like them. I just don't know why everyone keeps getting me stuffed animals. So who keeps getting you stuffed animals? My friends, my family, like random cousins who are like, oh, you're in college now? Let's get you a decoration. Here's a stuffed narwhal. Hey, I, narwhals? Bye, buddy. I hope you find it's the, the best animal. One That's of the a really greatest. Good it's, a, it's a fictional animal, but one of the greatest. It's real. Yeah. No, narwhals are. We'll come back to that later. Yeah. Anyways, on to news. Hi, I'm Dylan. And I'm Glory. And the Concordia College forensic team competed the third annual state tournament, February 20th, 21st. The senior speech student earned three of the top five individual speaker awards at the 2021 Minnesota Collegiative Forensics Association State Tournament. And this great victory was brought home by seniors Leah Roberts at first place and in, in persuasive speaking, Josephine Nunez earned first place in press in, in, in the presentation and Dominic Mayer first place in impromptu speaking. All three of them were also named members of the Minnesota All-Star team. This honor is given to senior competitors in Minnesota for their excellence in their competitive success and also academic and service to their schools and communities. With the COVID pandemic delaying the start of football season, no one has felt it even worse than the Concordia cheerleading team. While many sports have been placed under various policies like mandatory masking during practices and frequent testing for both athletes and staff, the Concordia cheer team continues to try to keep their spirits high despite rather a frustrating outcome for the past two semesters. Fargo mask mandate extended, although certain areas of the United States are lifting mask mandate despite the CDC's advice. The Fargo City commissioners decided to, want to extend their in three to one vote for the mandate was voted to be in place until March 22nd. Reasons for this extension come down to the benefit and safety of students and teachers, as most are not vaccinated. Commissioner Tony Gray was the single dissent of the mandate extension. However, despite his vocal opposition to mask wearing and claimed that if the city were to follow science, two masks would need to be required. This second notion did not go through. The mandate will be evaluated later this month. As March stands to be the Women's History Month, the Minnesota State University of Moorhead is raising awareness of how the suffrage movement is connected to the rights of other groups. In addition to a display, the university is going to host multiple speakers online to talk about the true history of women's rights. The online talks are open to the public and they will be focusing on giving people more knowledge about political ideas such as suffrage, anarchism, and other issues they believe to have been misunderstood by the members of the public. People interested can check out these speakers at Minnesota State University Women's Center on Facebook. As the world demand for clean energy goes up, the cost of the process threatens one of the most biodiverse areas in Ecuador. Some investors are demanding wood to make blades for wind generator. This material con comes from natural resources in Ecuador. The urgency for the matter and the lack of vigilance by Ecuadorian government due to the restrictions caused by the pandemic contributed to unleashing chaos. The frenzied logging in the recent month threatened the habitat of protected animals, increased illegal extraction, made workers precarious and divided indigenous communities and as says different sources counted by the BBC Mundo. This past week, the shocking news came that publications of six Dr. Seuss books will cease to be published due to racist and insensitive images in the books. Publications such as And to Think I Saw That on Mulberry Street will no longer be printed. The Dr. Seuss Enterprise states that in, books, in these books, they portray people in a wrong and hurtful way. Even with the history of portraying racist and anti-Semitic images from Dr. Seuss, there was a public outcry on social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook. Despite these protests, many believe this will bring positive change to teaching curriculums. And next, an interview with Parker on Cord Radio.
All right. As you heard, I am joined by the lovely, the magnificent Parker Erickson, who, if you haven't met him already, what a treat. What a treat. So, Parker, please introduce yourself. Tell us what you're here for. Hi, everyone. My name is Parker Erickson, as Jack just said. I'm a junior here at Concordia. Of course, it'd be kind of weird if you had someone from another college on. Um, and I'm here to talk about Chord Radio today, what it's about, and how to join it. All right, well, if you guys don't know what the Chord Radio is, it is our sister station, literally located right above us, but that's a different story for another time. So Parker, tell us a little bit about Chord Radio for everyone who doesn't know what it is already. Yeah. So Chord Radio is so much fun because each student radio station DJ, disc jockey, um, they basically get an hour a week or possibly more. We definitely have some slots open for students to do a two hour show if they really wanted. Um, but basically during that hour, you can talk about whatever you want, play whatever music you want, really. It's kind of up to you to decide what your show is going to be about. We have plenty of students who do sport broadcasting. We have plenty of students who do fun little talk shows about different events. Um, and then we have students who just play music that they find interesting. Um, so you sign up for a time slot and basically it's your hour. Um, we just ask that you don't play music that President Kraft might find interesting and would maybe want further conversation on um, but pretty much it's it's open to what you would like to do and now have you ever hosted a station before yes so i have a show on court on air called q and friends or question and friends and basically the premise of the show i run around campus not really run around i find someone on campus that i kind of know but I don't know too well. Um, and the point is to bring someone into the studio with me and I just ask them questions that, you know, further on into the show get a little bit more deeper. And then we play music in between different songs that we've been, you know, vibing to. <laughs> vibing, am I, do, am I, do I sound like a loser if I use that terminology? No, no, you're good. keep going, keep going. Um, and we just, the goal is just to become better friends with them. Obviously this year with COVID, having a two person show has been a little bit harder, um, but I am very trusting that um, hopefully um, next fall we'll be able to get two people back in the studio. Now, or personally, maybe three. with your show, what are the strengths and weaknesses to having that? Because as you said, it's harder to have two people in the studio. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you've had to deal with specifically because of COVID? So with the show itself, I've had to obviously change the layout of my show um, since it is kind of just like a one man show at the moment um so really i i've kind of eliminated a little bit of that other person aspect which is sad because that's like the entire theme of the show and now i just talk a little bit more not so much about myself but just like i ramble about different things that i'm finding interesting so maybe this year instead of learning about other people we're learning about myself which might be nice um and then i play a lot more music than i used to Gotcha. Okay. Yes. And then how much of a time commitment do you think would be involved in hosting your own show? It's not a time commitment like at all. As long as you can schedule a hour out within your week for you to do the show, that's all you need to worry about. The only other thing that you need to worry about is creating a little infographic for your show that will post on the Instagram just to let people know that they can um, go to this place and listen to your show at this time, but that you have to do that once and then you're good for the rest of the year. And it takes like 10 minutes to do that. Oh, that's super awesome. That's yes. great to know. Now, if people are interested in getting their own hour, how do they do that? So what you need to do, you need to DM the Chord Radio Instagram account. It's so, so, so easy um, to do that. Just look up Chord Radio, Chord with a K. So it's K-O-R-D radio. Um, to just type that into Instagram and you can follow us or you can just send us a DM and let us, you know, if you have any further questions, ask us there or you can sign up for a time slot. I can get that sent to you. Um, you can also email our um, station manager, um, Ingrid Ingrid Harbo, um, who we're gonna miss so much next year. She's graduating this year. Um, but Ingrid Harbo, you can type her up on the Outlook, um, you know, email yeah, thingy yeah. <laughs> and you can just say hi I'm interested in a show that's all you have to do and Ingrid will get back to you really quickly and I'm assuming if people want more information but they don't know where to reach out can they always reach out to you as well yes yep reach out to me on all social media platforms anything find me anywhere um, I'm pretty sure my username is mostly just like Parker Erickson in a lot of places <laughs> so just look for the profile picture that maybe looks like me and that's where you can you can DM me whatever you have whatever questions you have that's super exciting. Thank you so much, Parker, for coming in. We're going to move on to sports. Spring has sprung, f sports fans, and the Mayak has announced earlier today their plan for both spring semester sports and fall sports, which were postponed to the spring due to COVID. 
The plan basically stated that the traditional spring sports like baseball, softball, track and field, tennis, and golf will all compete in as normal of a season as possible, given the circumstances, circumstances and have conference championships at the end of their seasons. Fall sports, on the other hand, will have a condensed season and will not have any postseason. In addition, none of the games teams play against each other in, in the MIAC against other MIAC schools will count as conference games in the record books. Concordia's head football coach Terry Horan said he plans on having a regular spring practices and, and in this season and an intra-squad scrimmage at the end of the condensed schedule. Horan also said this was to protect, protect student athletes from suffering any unnecessary injuries as well as to reduce the risk of them getting COVID. The decision also allows multi-sport athletes to focus on playing their spring sport as well. The men's basketball team has had their already shortened season cut short. The men had their final two games of the season against Augsburg and St. Mary's called off on Monday, March 1st. The men finished with an 0-4 record, but they showed marked signs of improvement since last season with Tyler Borman in his first year as the Cobbers head coach. The women also had three of their final four games canceled on Monday as well, but still have one more game against St. Ben's scheduled for Friday, March 12th. Right now, the women are sitting at 2-4 and four on the season and will hopefully be back on the court one more time this spring. And now, we move on to another interview. Hey, Cobbers. So one thing that has been so unlovingly taken away from us this year is study away opportunities. And I have the lovely Mary from Court on Air here to, uh, to represent study away. How are you doing today, Mary? I'm um, doing well. How about that's you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, so I know that we had talked briefly before. So you said that you had almost gotten a study away opportunity like this no, past no, no, year? No, no, I did have a study away opportunity. Yes. I studied away in Liverpool, England in the fall of 2019. So the semester before COVID hit okay. and ruined everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I did have a full semester opportunity. I wish I could have extended it to a full year, although I know that would have been cut short, but financial reasons on my part didn't allow that. So what did you specifically study whilst in England or where did you study as like a conduit there? Um, so I, like I said, I went to Liverpool, England, and there we um, do a study away, ex like I don't wanna say exchange because I don't know how many students from Liverpool come here, but um, it's a program that we have with uh, Liverpool Hope University. Okay. And what I did was I basically took classes that fulfilled my political science minor, so I finished that there. Um, it was very interesting being there during Brexit, may I say, as well as um, I got to take a class on the history of witchcraft in Europe. Ooh. And yeah, that was the classes I took. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a little bit, so I have to think of what I actually took. Yeah, for sure. So coming up into, into this next year, uh, we all hope that things are going to go back to normal, and maybe some kids will be able to travel somewhere for the fall semester. I know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of kids already that are upperclassmen friends that are hoping that they get to go places. Uh, have you heard anything in specific about news regarding that in terms of us traveling outside anywhere? Well, I'm not entirely sure about semester-long programs like the one that I went on. However, the Study Away program is having opportunities more, um, I believe it's like about a few weeks to a month or something like okay. that. Um, they are having some opportunities kind of more focused such as, such as like Health in France. Um, I think there's like a, maybe a music program. Okay. If there's more information on the Study Away page on Concordia's um, like page. Mm. <laughs> um, however, there are opportunities and I believe there is actually, uh, I don't know if it's in person or not, but of like opportunities to learn if you follow the Concordia Study Away Instagram, okay. then you will be able to go on their stories and see everything about that. And I believe if you're one of the first 75 people to ask a question on that day, I wish I had it on the top of my head, but I don't. Um, if you ask a question on that day, you can get a free uh, vou like coffee voucher or drink voucher voucher for the coffee stop. So. Oh well, that's yeah, awesome. Learn I know. Cool things and get a nice gift. Yeah, I know we all need caffeine in these trying times. I know I only got six hours of sleep last night maybe oh i can't remember um but anyways thank you so much for joining us mary if yeah, you guys definitely. have any more questions about that we'll be sure to go to the concordia website and the concordia study away instagram to see all these new opportunities now mm -hmm. on to parker and jack at a and e welcome to a and e everyone today we have a very very exciting topic i apologize if the screen is a little bit small but use your imagination or follow along with us if you Google 21 best outfit looks at the Golden Globe Awards 2021. 
Jack, this was a very, very odd year for the Golden Globes, as for all different award, show, award shows. Um, there was some in-person attendance, but most of the people accepted their awards on a webcam, online. But that didn't stop some of Hollywood's top actors from showing up, stepping out, and looking good. I would agree with that statement. Even though the Golden Globes was virtual, people still looked like models. And I mean, let's be honest, most actors and actresses do look like models. Mm -hmm. But let's start with this lovely piece. I, when I saw this for the first time, it caught my breath a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. A single tear came to my eye. I think this was the top dress of the night. Really, really. So this is Anya Taylor-Joy, who recently just came off of a huge buzz um, from her role in The Queen's Gambit. Um, she's wearing Dior Hot Couture here. Um, so it's a collection, the, the spring collection line from, from Dior. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's this very, very nice emerald, like kind of a deep emerald green dress that I think is just lovely and it fits her perfectly. Um, I do want to play a little game while we're looking at the different outfits. How likely would this actress kill her husband in this dress if they had a husband or wife or spouse, mm. I should say? I wouldn't say kill the spouse. I would say the spouse is already dead. This is yeah. definitely a widow's dress oh, in a you're good so right. way. Like a sexy widow coming back to really kick it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And personally, I always love dresses or outfits that are really stark different from each other. And we can see this here with a very deep colored emerald compared to Anya's like very pale silhouette and blonde hair like it's i love those contrasts i so agree with you about the widow thing but doesn't couldn't she doesn't it also kind of look like a dress like i don't know what happened to my husband and it's like a little cheeky you know it's like oh she knows yeah, yeah. She, she knows what happened see? to him she's a widow yes. all right we'll move on from anya thank you anya for the gown all right next up we have viola davis in ck a uh, bright beautiful really really wonderful pattern on the dress itself um, I can't exactly tell what it is. It looks like maracas. I believe they're little maracas on the dress in little colors, or they're different, like little like they fans kinda look of like different fans, colors. Yeah. Yes. And personally, this isn't my favorite dress out there, but anything she wears, she does it. Yeah. it I, she is a woman who I look up to because of how much she has done and all this power that she exudes. She's honestly at a point in her career where she can wear whatever she wants and she'll look good in it. Yes. No, I totally agree. I love that it's a mermaid style in her, I think. True. I don't know if anyone said it yet, but Hourglass, like, she looks awesome here. Um, <laughs> and I love Viola. I have not seen some of her, her newer work for what she's been nominated for, the Golden Globes, um, but she's been, she's great in anything, yeah, so in I think it things. works. All right, next up. We have Audra Day. So the reason why, I think Audra Day might be one of the lesser known people on, the, on this list still, so incredibly talented. The reason why I wanted to include her into this very short lineup that we're showing is because the top of her dress almost looks to be macrame. And macrame was so huge in the 70s. From what I've seen from some of the fashion lately on, on the TikTok, is, are, is the 70s coming back? Are those styles coming back like macrame? And like a like a looser silhouette. Oh, what are yeah. your thoughts? I would definitely agree. I've seen a lot of 70s style coming back. And I know personally, a lot of my friends really love 70s style, mm -hmm. but 90s too. It's kind of an on off thing. Like I remember recently butterfly clips are yes. coming back. And before that, ABBA suddenly was this big boom again. Mm -hmm. So it's a very on off thing between 70s and 90s. Poor 80s. Just yeah. that big hair kind of threw everything. It'll come off. back though. I love the 80s the most. Let's hope it mullets don't come back. No, let's hope it does come back. Next up, we're gonna move on to Elle Fanning. Elle Fanning is wearing a Gucci. Um, she's wearing a blue satin dress. Satin is one of my least favorite fabrics. What are your <laughs> thoughts? I don't know. I mm, Satin and silk, that kind of like gleaminess of fabric, I personally enjoy yeah. it. Do I ever wear it? No, because it's too expensive. Yes. But I will say when I looked at this, I was immediately like, oh. Yes, it catches the eye. Yes. It's Aurora, again, which is a good thing. And I love Elle Fanning and anything she does. True, All good right. point. Thank you, Elle. Come on. Third time's a charm. There yes, you go. next up, next up we have newcomer, Emma Corinne. Um, she is in Moo Moo, 
and she is she Iconic. was up for the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress, Best Actress, I think it was Best Actress in a drama series, Limited. which is The Crown. Yep. She played Princess Diana, which is a very very hard role to portray because Princess Diana, I've never heard a single person say a single bad thing about Princess Diana. Yeah. She is so loved by so many. So the actress, I almost feel like, kind of has to fit into that role as well mm -hmm. in order to correctly play her. And I think she looks gorgeous here in this Shakespearean kind of gown. I would agree. And it's like, to go off the Shakespeare theme, it's very, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the opposite of scandalous. Like it's very... Oh, opposite of scandalous, modest. Yeah, it's very modest, perfect. And then like you look at like, oh, a, a not, little slit. Yeah, a, a little, little slit. A little, a little peek. I like I, it. Yeah. I love it. I, I think, think it's, it's awesome. I love, I love the, and you, but you know what? Maybe the 80s are coming back because that huge, like over-exaggerated, like, this is a very Diana like, like shoulder, outfit. that's kind of 80s. Yeah. I, we, well, word is still out, everyone. Yeah. All right, for the final look of the night, my personal favorite look and my favorite actress and, and, um, uh, what is it called? Broadway performer. Um, we have Cynthia in Revo, who just looks amazing in this neon green, very futuristic looking bioluminescence dress. I, I really love this look and I love Cynthia. So anything she does, I'm kind of like, yeah, go for I, it. I would have to say ditto. I think the best part of this piece is definitely the nose ring. Like that's mm -hmm. something you really have to look at. Cause like once you dry, dry, wow. Draw your eye away from the dress. I, yes. yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, a lot of people called it a sari piece. And to be honest, I also think it kind of looks like a sorry piece, no. but a very fashionable no. sorry piece. No, sorry, she can't do any wrong. Um, she is dressed in <laughs> Valentino, by the way, and I think she looks lovely. Oh, 100%. All right, everyone, that's all we have on a &E. Next up, we have a game with Dylan and Grant. Hi, sport, um, hi, a &E. I mean, I mean, hi, game fans. Yes, game fans. We've come accustomed to this kind of tradition around here at Cordon Air, and today is nothing different. Of course, it's no diners, drive-ins, and Dylan's, of course, with me eating these weird foreign foods. Although, I did eat all those coconut cookies last week because those were actually pretty good. But today, we are doing Finish the Lyric. And it's exactly as it sounds. I'm going to read, yeah, a typical game show clap. We don't have a live studio audience here. Um, but I'm going to read a, a well-known lyric uh, with no notes attached that should be known, and you guys are going to try to, I don't know, make your best buzzer, like an ant eh noise, and then we'll call on you to see what you think the lyric is. Are you guys both ready? Let's go. Sure. Splendid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Up in the club. Club, just broke up, up. I'm doing my own blank. Why am I looking at you for an answer? I, I don't have it either. I'll give you one more reading. I'll do it even on beat for you. Up in the club, club just broke up, up. I'm doing my own blank, blank. Yeah. Dance, final answer. Uh, incorrect. <laughs> I'm gonna go, since it's a two, it's two blanks, I'm mm -hmm. gonna go with darn thing. Uh, that was actually very close, Grant. Uh, instead scary. of darn, it was little thing, little thing. Uh, from Beyonce's Single Ladies. Uh, <laughs> slash put a ring on it. Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> what? Okay. Um, no, I, okay. yeah. This, this one should be a good one. Do you ever feel like a plastic... <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to stop on, Jack? No, I just got knowledge. Okay, already. so what, what is the lyric that is the one that's missing in this example? Wind. Incorrect. Naughty, eh. naughty. Do you want me to read the example for you since yes, you please. weren't as eager as our dear friend Jack? Grant, do you ever feel like a plastic bag, bag drifting through the wind, wanting to blank blank? To fit in. Oh, that is can incorrect, I, can I Grant. Come back? I don't no, come you back. cannot. Because of your eagerness, wow, a true display of excellence from both of our comrades here. It's start again, folks. Start again. It's start again. Okay. I haven't watched the interview in a while. Okay. Do don't you ever say I just walked away. I will always blank blank. Love you. Incorrect. I Grant. was gonna, I was going to say that but I will always um I I I can only think of wrecking ball. I thought it was love you. 
So what's your final answer here, um, Grant? I want food. I'm, did Weird Al do a cover of it? <laughs> um, so it's not Want Food uh, by Weird Al. It's uh, Don't You Ever Say I Just Walked Away. I Will Always Want You want from you. Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball. I had a plastic bed. bag. I, um, I'm not coming back from that. <laughs> okay, let's see. I was working part-time in a five and dime. My boss was Mr. McGee. He told me several times that he didn't like my kind because I was a bit too blank. Gosh, I wish I could just go back to the 80s. Me too. One more reading here. Gosh. I was working part-time in a five and dime. My boss was Mr. McGee. He told me several times that he didn't like my kind because I was a bit too blank. Incorrect, Grant. It rhymes. <laughs> that is true. It does have an E at the end. Yes. Good for you. Good, Good for you. Good for me. Yeah. What's the verdict here, Jack? I'm just going to go for it and say wee wee. Wee wee. That is incorrect. End. It is uh, from, <laughs> from Prince's Raspberry Beret. It's leisurely because I was a bit too leisurely. Yeah. Totally rhymes with free. We we're leisurely. pretty close. For sure. And wee wee. Okay. So here's the are gonna be our last and final question. Let's see Gosh, let's one. hope one of you gets yeah. a point. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, look at that face. You look like my next. Mistake. There you go. I know my Taylor Swift. Okay. Yeah, that is from Taylor Swift's blank space. And it is mistake. Jack? Is the answer blank for blank space? Incorrect. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you just one makeup question to maybe, let's say, boost your morale. Grant has already yeah, won this bit. one. Um, uh, I want your ugly. I want your disease. I want your everything as long as it's... Oh, I want your ugly. I want your disease. I want your everything as long as it's... Wow. <laughs> as long as it's not, I, I want, want your love. If I name the song and the year. <laughs> that, no. No. As long as it's. I want your ugly. I want your disease. I want your everything as long as it's blank. I, I have two words, and I know both of them are wrong. So I'm going to go with please. Okay, so what's your second word? It's not knees, is it? No, it's not knees. Is it knees? The word is free, Jack. Free? Free. I want your ugly, I want your disease, I want your everything as long as it's free. Okay, fans, so what have we learned today? One thing that we have definitely learned is that time. in the aspects of modernized pop culture and some earlier pop culture, we are heathens and don't know anything. So, if this has taught you anything, go to Spotify, listen to something different now and again, please and thank you. Thank you all for joining us, uh, to our lovely contestants. Congratulations, Grant. Your first, is that your first game win? Uh, probably. I got the Katy Perry right, just buzzed in too early. Let's remember that, Cobbers. Have a great night. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.